Okay, we laugh now. Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for our talk on vibrational food. Now, you might say, what on earth is vibrational food? I haven't heard of all the other kind of food. Well, it refers to the concept of different foods have different energy vibrations and frequency. You know, everything has energy. Even a stone has got energy. It's got that movement in it. And so food has got, got energy in it. And you can, I can actually now feel the energy of the food. If it's, as there's an old African saying called perlep, if it's in the the supermarket and it looks a bit wilted and but yucky it's energy is not good we aim to eat foods that have this high vibration that are fresh that are straight from the, the ground or from the tree or wherever and make sure because it definitely affects not only our physical but our mental health and you know um, and i know everybody's favorite is coffee which um as a, as a wild food person you don't drink but coffee actually, it's proven fact, and I just Googled it now, it brings your energy levels down and, and makes you feel anxious and nervous and all that type of thing. By eating high vibrational foods, you can actually make yourself feel so much better. And I'm waffling away because we're waiting for all the people who are joining us on, online on Facebook Live to, to join us. So I'm just going to talk a little bit more about um, energy frequency and how vibrational food um this has got a better energy frequency than the sort of all the dead food that you buy. And somebody gave me a really good tip. She said, you've got to buy from the outside of the supermarket because all the fridges are around the outside of the supermarket and all the dead food is in the middle. So the tins of stuff and, you know, the dried pasta and all those sort of things, they're all, they're in the middle of the supermarket. But if you buy around the outside, there's all your fresh stuff is around there where the fridges are. Because the story is that if you've got to, unless you're going to put it in the fridge, it hasn't got a high vibration in it. So you've got to really get that. So it aligns with your holistic wellness and focus on how your diet affects your body, your mind, and your spirit. So it's really, really fantastic. And you've got to have um, food that is not processed. You do not want something that's been through a process and had all sorts of chemicals put into it. Your aim is to have something that's really, really fresh and um just it's brimming with energy itself because you have to eat that energy to, to get it into you. So you've got to have things that are organic. You know, you can't have something that's it's grown and, you know, and, and like in a place and then goes into like the bananas and walnuts. They go into those hangers um, in Centurion and they get nuked so that they last for so long. How do you know that, that it's been nuked? How do you know it's got preservatives in it? Well, if you've got a bread maker and you make your own bread, it lasts about a day, two at the most. If you buy bread in the supermarket, it lasts a week because it's got so much preservative inside it. So, and the other thing I think which is quite important is that it has to be prepared with love and with good energy as well. If you're a miserable cross person chipping the stuff up and you know, that, that energy is going to go into that food and the people eating it will not enjoy it as much as you do. I just went to a fabulous place here um, where the, the Japanese chef cooks all the food in front of you. It was, uh, me being vegan was a bit of a challenge, too, but he managed and he absolutely chops everything up and I said to him, you can't give me anything that's processed or anything you've got to go and get me some fresh stuff and he did and he came in and chopped all mine up cooked it in front of me and presented it and it was absolutely fantastic it was presented it was cooked with energy and and I honestly felt the energy when I could eat it so you know ask me the next question is what foods have got high vibrations well foods like fruit and vegetables and all the really, really good things. Herbs have got amazing good energy, you know. Um, I eat, because I don't eat meat, I eat a lot of legumes. I try not to eat grains because of wild fit, and Kerry's going to expand on that later. But I eat a lot of, leg, um, you know, um, God, I can't even think of the word now, lentils. Lentils and beans and that type of thing. I always cook them. I cook them in my by one pot, which is just amazing. But uh, you want to try and just read the the on the label and read that label before you put anything in your basket and make sure that it hasn't got any preservatives in it. And of course, you're going to try and cut down by cut down all the sweet stuff, the donuts and the sugary sweets and all that type of thing. So, uh, you know, it's just incredible and you'll feel so much better. Of course, the best way to get your vibration up is to exercise. That's, you know, really how you get your vibration up the best. But if you can't exercise and you want to be healthy, just eat those good vibrational foods, which are so, so good and so healthy. So Kerry, come on, and you are the world expert on this. Come in and tell us about what you think good vibrational foods are. Yeah, uh, Margaret, thank you so much, because everything you're saying is just 
absolutely on the mark. It's really on the point. And I love that you talk about cooking with love, like cooking with good energy, because people feel that. It's like yeah. you've heard the saying, oh, I made this with love. And when you yeah. make something with love, you feel that. You really feel that. So that's absolutely amazing. But I would love to chat about this body of ours. And really, when you think about it, every organ in this body can be measured. The energy of the organ in the body can be measured. So our brain is measured. And when our brain is functioning correctly, it is measured at 72 megahertz. So that's the energy that our brain needs in order to function correctly. Our stomach is 68 megahertz. Our liver is between 65 and 72 megahertz. So every organ has energy in order to function. Now, if we are putting what I term dead food <laughs> into mm -hmm. this living energy body, it's, it's not going to allow any of those organs to function correctly. It's really not. So we need this high vibrational living food in order to feed our body, really in order to feed our body. So I've got a chart in, in my clinic and it's really got all the organs and all the, um, the, the energy levels, the vibrational levels that are measured for, ev for every organ. And then I've got a list of all the foods and all the foods and what the energy you get out of those foods. So like you said, processed foods, refined sugar fruits, how much energy could possibly be in those foods? Yeah. Zero. Zero. They are dead. It's yeah. dead food. Now you put in something that's processed into a living body with a high vibration. How is your brain supposed to function? How is your liver supposed to function? How is your heart supposed to function? How is your body supposed to function when you're putting processed dead foods into this high vibrational living body? And then people want to know why they have symptoms or why they feel ill or why they feel sick or why they don't have energy. You don't have energy if you're not putting energetic foods into our body. So like you mentioned, something that is really, really high in vibration is herbs. Herbs yeah. sits at between 20 and 27 megahertz for herbs. That's amazing. That's really amazing. So you want to put these beautiful living foods into our body. Same with fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. High vibration, it's all between 20 and 27 megahertz. That's that food. But you take a box of cereal. A box of cereal. Oh, it's my worst. Yeah. <laughs> that is my worst. To see my grandchildren eat that box of cereal, those Cheerios with the sugar in it. It's, it's absolute cardboard. It's sugar-coated cardboard. And you just think, how on earth are these children going to function during the day? So, you know, how are they going to actually make it happen? It just cannot happen. And then, you know, then the worst thing, my absolute worst to see a child drinking Coke. I can go absolutely hysterical because you just know that that's going to just chomp all the insides to nothing so I can't stand that so just to let you know and I'll just I'll just um refer to my notes yes so I can get it right the the human body is between 72 and 90 megahertz okay so we look at the human body but every organ has a different amount of energy now yeah. if we have a low immune system and we get ill if we, for instance, if we just catch a cold, it means that our body is operating on 58 megahertz. Oh, wow. So it's not far away that we can actually experience symptoms. It's really not far away. If we had to pick up viruses, viruses come around at about 52 megahertz. Um, cancers come around when our body is operating at 42 megahertz. Hmm. Wow. So, so our body is still functioning well. We still got energy in our body, but we've dropped the whole human body um, energy to 42 megahertz. That's when cancer starts to grow. So um, fresh food, I've mentioned. Uh, oh, the other one, which is really, really high, by the way, high in energy, essential oils. Oh, really? Essential oils. Oils are between 52 and 320 megahertz. Wow. I know. I know. It's amazing. And then, of course, the other highest energy that you could absolutely get is sunlight. Yes. Is sunlight. 
So the absorption of the sunlight to allow our bodies, I mean, you, you think about putting, putting a plant in the dark, it's going to die. You put any person in the dark, it's not going to feel good at all, <laughs> you know? So we've got to make sure that we at least see the sun or be out in the sun. As soon as the sun comes out, we want it, We want our bodies to be out there. And we don't want to lather our bodies full of suntan lotion and block the sun. We want to just make sure that we're out of the sun during the burning hours. But during the other times, we want the sun to be on our skin. We want to be absorb the energy of the sun so that the organs can function. So sunlight has amazing energy. Food has amazing energy, depending on the food that you choose. But then also water has a frequency. Yes. So water has an energetic frequency. And so this is super, super important that we hydrate our bodies so that we absolutely can flush the toxins out because those pathogens and those viruses and those bacteria and those parasites come into a body with low vibration. So the minute that we get to the, the 50, 52, as far as our vibration goes in our, in our body, it, um, that's when disease starts to set in. That's when we actually have symptoms. So we don't want to get to that. Now, another thing that either lifts our energy up or brings our energy down, it's emotions. Yes, it's, it's so true. That can really throw you. So I just wanted everybody to put in the chat, um, because we didn't even say hello to everybody today, because I went straight into it. Everybody put in the chat who you are, where you're from, and did you ever know about food having a vibrational energy before or not? We just want to know who we're talking to. So I'm just going to give everybody a, a few minutes. You put your name in, where you are, somebody where I am, and did you know about this or not? And you just say yes or no, or you can put Y or N, and just we'll know. So um, Shane's from Cape Town. And did you know about vibrational energy in food? Did you we, did you ever look at the food and think you're energetic looking or you are half dead looking, you know? And um, I think with water as well. And I'm just, uh, Kerry, I'm interested. I know there's, uh, we sell um, lots of water filtration machines now. And the water filtration machines that, that say that they'll give you better energy because they take so much rubbish out of the water. Now, I'm a great believer in just drinking tap water. I think, oh, you know, people go ballistic over bottled water and you drink it out of this plastic. And you know how long it's been in the plastic. So I just drink it out of the tap. But when you're drinking water, do you, do you filter your water? Do you... Um, Drink it out the tap. Do you drink bottled water? What is the best way to do that? Yeah. So, so interesting because I even had a client the other day say, oh, I've bought alkaline water. I've bought alkaline. You don't need alkaline water. I tell you now, it actually does no good for our bodies. Margaret, as long as there is some uh, filtration, because I do think our tap water today, for instance, um, in South Africa, the water is, ha, does have some bacteria in it. So we do need to filter some of that out. In New Zealand, our water source here, we live on volcanic rocks. Our yeah. water is full of heavy metals. Mm. So if we don't filter the heavy metals out, they do tend to build up in our body. So depending where you are in the world, there's going to be different things that come through the tap waters. But you don't need huge fancy things and you don't need to buy alkaline water and you don't need to buy bottled water. As long as you've got just a good old filter system on the water, I, I promise you now it's more about getting more of the good stuff in. Now, if you want that water to be absorbed into the cells, which is what we're after, we want the water to be absorbed into our cells. The quickest and the easiest way to get water absorbed into cells is to put a few little crystals of Celtic salt or Himalayan salt in your water. Oh, wow. You put a few Celtic salt has got the highest mineral content and Celtic salt is handcrafted. So once again, you don't want anything that's processed. So if you buy hand, it's called handcrafted Celtic salt. You can actually put those little crystals into your water and that is makes the water so it makes the water smooth. So don't put too much salt that the water is salty. So we want smooth, uh, smooth water to drink and we want the water to be hydrated and absorbed into your cells for the healing purpose to happen. And so that for me is the best way because we need minerals. We need minerals for the healing process to happen. So um, so that's what we're looking for is the Celtic salt. 
So um, yes, what about tissue salts? I don't even know what tissue salts are. <laughs> yeah, tissue salts are a healing salt. So I wouldn't put tissue salts in the water, but I would have tissue salts separately. So tissue salts are absolutely awesome for healing. And you have different tissue salts for different um, for different symptoms. So I'm I'm a big fan of tissue salts. Absolutely, you can you can have them, but not I wouldn't put them in my water. I wouldn't put them in the water. Charles just says black salt is also healthy. I've seen black salt, but I didn't fancy putting it. It's better than putting black pepper on your food without black salt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I haven't heard of the black salt, I must be honest. I haven't heard of the black salt, but um, but definitely the, the Celtic salt. You want any salt that has got a high a mineral. So anything with high minerals and preferably things that actually have been handcrafted so that we don't have to worry about um, going through any of the processes. Because the minute it's in the factory and it's processed, we know what happens. We know it's, it's got all the chemicals. Vibration. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And, and tell us about, you know, we can I, I can read vibrations. When I walk into a room, because I've been studying it for a long time, I can read the vibrations in a room. I always say we start off our morning meeting, everybody's just come in and put their bag down and come into our morning meeting. And the vibrations are really, really low, about 200, I think. And then as we go and we start singing and dancing and, and getting ourselves more revved up, I can get that vibration level up to about 600 because they're just feeling so much better in themselves. And that's what it's all about. You know, what do we want to do? We want to feel good in ourselves. And it's so difficult being here in the States because here they really try and program you to be sick. They keep telling you that you've got this disease and this allergy and this. And you, by the end of, well, I don't watch television at all anymore because by the end of three adverts, I was trying to think, oh my God, have I got that? Have I got these symptoms? You know, and you start to think you have. So I don't believe in watching television at all, which I don't. And especially those adverts for all the medical stuff that's going around because it's such a money making thing they program you to feel sick and then you have to go to them to buy the pills and get the you know the treatment so i think it's really important to just to feel really good in yourself and if you do you don't want you don't feel the need to put all those cloggy heavy things into your body 100 percent. we are made these bodies are made every day that we are alive we are healing yeah. every day every day our body is getting rid of old dead cells Every day. It doesn't matter if you are moving into autophagy or not, which is <laughs> heightened um, acceleration of old dead cells. But every day, our body does that anyway. Our bodies every day make new stem cells. Every day. We, I had a lady in the clinic um, last year. She came through to see me. She's 81 years old. And um, and she she had symptoms and she was like, no, I'm still I've still got a way to go. I still want, you know, I still want uh, lots of lots of life ahead of me. But I measured her stem cells and then I put her through a program, flushed out all her dead food and put yeah. her living vibrational food in. I couldn't believe that at 81 years old, her stem cells strengthened. Um, they got stronger and I'm going you see it doesn't matter what age you are it actually yeah. it's it's just if we're alive if we're alive we've got an opportunity to strengthen our body we've got an opportunity to heal as mm -hmm. long as we're alive we've got an opportunity to heal we need to create a good environment in yeah. order to activate our healing and that's what listening to all that that tv shows and the adverts and everything else we feel that vibration going lower you know, yeah. if we had to listen to somebody and go, oh, my gosh, you know, you're sneezing, you better go and get something. Uh, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you well, know, we've, got, we've got a Facebook question here. She said, I've heard playing classical music changes water's vibration. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. There's a whole article, there's a whole book written on that. And it really does change the the, the vibration of the water. So, um, and even, you know, yourself with plants, if you talk nicely to your plant, it grows and flourishes. And if you just ignore it, it it'll just shrivel and die. Even if you put water on it and everything, it will never go to its full potential. And I'm actually trying it because I always say plants look at me and die. And I can never have plants because I'm never in one place for long enough. But we're going to be here for a while now. So I've got this beautiful plant and, and I talk to it every day and I give it water and I explain things to it and I chat to it and it's looking so healthy I'm going to give it to my friend when I leave because um you know it, I just it's it's absolutely the difference in that plant is unbelievable from when it came in it was looking sort of wilted and shriveled and now it looks it's really blossoming so I think yeah classical music is is fantastic for you as well as for water and the plants but I think 
also um really nice music is, is so important you know to have music around you it just makes you feel so it's good uplifting. yeah exactly uplifting but now what you said about the plant is like super super definitely that exactly that like, that works hugely but now think about think yeah. about a child yes. what do you say to a child how do yeah. you talk to a child? If you are constantly disciplining a child, or if you're constantly putting a child down, or if you're constantly expecting so much from a child, you know, mm -hmm. instead of just allowing them to love and play and build their, their confidence and build, it's exactly the same. What you mm -hmm. say to a child, that's what they grow into. What you say to a, an adult, that's what they grow into. You know, Absolutely. so it's, you know, it's what you say to to your family, your friends, your partner, your work colleagues. It's it's in those actions, those words, exactly yeah. the same as a plant. Exactly, the same. we 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 are living beings, and we absorb energy, and we absorb the 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 words, and we absorb the good stuff, and we also absorb the negative stuff, and yeah. so. You know, you've heard the saying over and over, we are the average of the five people we hang around with most. Because Absolutely. that's the energy that we're absorbing from them all. To us. Now, we just got another Facebook question, and I'm interested in this because it says, what about crystals and water? Now, I was given a water bottle by my son who's very into crystals and all sorts of things. And it's got a big crystal that comes up the middle of the water bottle. And I'm always, it looks so amazing. It looks like a piece of jewelry. So I, I'm always a bit loath to use it. But what do you think about putting crystals into water? Um, I do believe that crystals have a different frequency, so they do have a vibration within them. And, um, and you know, it's just, for me, I just think crystals are like God's gift to the earth because look how beautiful, like deep down in the earth, they discover these most magnificent things. I just think, you know, when they open up a rock and they see what's in the middle of, I mean, that's, that's incredible. That's absolutely yeah. incredible. That's amazing. So, so yeah, I, I, I love that you can absolutely look at crystals and feel good. And I yeah. think that for me is more important than, than looking at them and knowing that there's different properties with them with, within them with different vibrations. But, um, but definitely, you know, put some crystals in the water to, to increase the vibration and just make you feel good at yes. the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, who was I said they brought the, the black salt back from Iceland, but you can get black salt everywhere. That was Nicole. Yeah. Nicole on Facebook said she brought the black salt back. So, yeah, I, I, I'm a great believer in Himalayan salt myself, the pink Himalayan salt. I think that to me, that's really, really good as well. But let's just go back to, to the, the foods that you eat, because for me, I find it so difficult. I'm in airports all the time. You, I, sometimes I cannot eat one thing in the whole airport. I really can't. I just say, I cannot eat a thing in this airport because it's all gooey and sugary and fried. And it's just so, so difficult to do that. But you have to persevere. And I tend to take food with me if I possibly can. And I don't feel a thing taking my food out when they come and give you those, uh, you know, those philipta things that they give you on the airplane. I take my own food out and, and I have my own tea with me and all sorts of things and I just say no I don't want your coffee thanks can I just have hot water and my tea my rooibos tea of course which I bring in from South Africa here but um, talk to us about you know the foods that we should be looking at more you know obviously the fruits and vegetables what else yeah so I think what's really important to, to understand about the foods as well is that when we eat for instance when we eat a fruit and you eat it raw and mm -hmm. or if you eat vegetables and you eat it raw, that's actually the highest vibration that mm -hmm. you can put in there is the raw food. So mm -hmm. that for me is like whatever you do during your day, you've got to have some raw food, which is why I'm a big fan of smoothies, because yeah. it's a matter of actually putting so much good vibrations into a small quantity and getting and filling your system full of this good stuff all at once. Um, but then every time you cook the food, you must realize that the, you know, if it's slightly steamed, you're good. If it's, you know, if it's really cooked so much, it's lost some of its energy. It's lost some of its frequency. So every time that it goes through a process of cooking it more and more and more, you're mm -hmm. going to have a little bit less of that frequency, a little bit less of that vibration going into your body. Mm -hmm. But then again, you've got, um, you know, you've got the foods that have got no vibration in them at all, which is what... <laughs> which is what you want to avoid. So rather have cooked food than yeah. have foods that are processed. So Absolutely. that for me is, is still, it's still number one is, um, is having cooked foods and um, yeah. 
And my friend here said she uh, she's actually got a little herb garden outside the back of her yard. She bought me a whole packet full of basil. And I, I said, and I don't know what to do with all this basil. So I made basil pesto. And for those of you on it, it's so easy. I just put some cashews, a little bit of olive oil, the basil in, and it came out beautifully. I, I, it really did. It came out magnificently. And I put it onto everything. It tasted so good. And obviously I used the basil and I had that really good vibration in it because it was it was so fresh. It came straight out of her garden. So I think it's really important to do that. And um, if I stay in one place for long enough, I definitely have a herb garden. But uh, so often you go past, I just went past the lady's bush now, and it was a rosemary bush. And I just sort of took a, a, the end of the leaf for like this much off, and I brought it home, and you can cook with that as well. So I think it's really important to have that. I've started putting parsley into a lot of things. You know, parsley goes in fads. One minute everybody's using parsley, and then they only use it for decoration. But I put parsley into a salad recently, and it just really it, it gave it such an extra boost because it. But talk to me about flatly parsley and ordinary parsley, you so, know, the different kinds. Yes. Well, what I was just going to say is parsley and coriander, by the way, um, and 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 parsley, it, it, there is different types of parsley, but the parsley and the coriander, they actually amazing to attract heavy mm. metals in your body so that you pass it out. Mm. So it's actually really important to have some parsley and coriander sometime in the system because our bodies, they kind of like store some of those heavy metals. And what happens is, when we have when we have parasites in our system and we kill the parasites off, sometimes they can leave lead behind. So oh. you can have yeah old um, old uh, heavy metals. If you've had amalgam fillings in your mouth, there's some mercury in your system as well because some of those leak into the system and they just kind of stay in the body. So if you've got mercury or lead or here yeah, uh, drinking water from the um, from the volcanic soil, I see arsenic in the water. <laughs> So, yes, yes, my mind was blown the first time I was exposed to it. <laughs> and if you're around anybody that vapes, you're going to have chemicals and heavy metals because vaping has lead, it's got um, uh, aluminium, it's got a lot of heavy metals in the system as well. Now, those heavy metals. I, I yeah. want to cry when I see young people vaping. I just say, what are you doing? What yeah. are you thinking? Do you know what you're doing to your body? And sorry for that. They don't want to hear it from me. And I just say, I always say, do you know what you're doing to your body? And they look at me as I'm crazy. They don't understand how bad it is. It's much worse than cigarettes. Much worse. Much worse. Yeah. Much, much worse. I've, yeah. actually, I've actually done scans of people in the clinic. I scanned a woman, 40 years old. She'd been smoking tobacco for 20 years. I scanned a 19-year-old that had been vaping for a year, and his lungs were worse. Oh, his so lungs were worse. I actually said, go back to smoking or, or take up smoking if you really <laughs> want to. I know, I know I shouldn't be doing that, but actually that yeah. vaping, it's chemicals straight into the lungs, straight into your system. And mm. now you've got those heavy metals, and they just sink. The heavy metals sink to the bottom of the cells and mm. it's hard to draw them out. So, so a process that you can draw them out is coriander, parsley, spirulina, um, activated charcoal, zeolite, bentonite, uh, barley grass is really good for it as well to draw it out, Atlantic dulse. So all of those type of things, you can you can actually throw them all into one smoothie with some fruit and yeah. you'll be able out heavy metals a while ago everybody was taking spirulina and it seems to have lost a bit of its, its, its sort of uh, fashion mode. but now at the moment what do you think about spirulina because i used to, i used to take it all the time but i remember I, I tried to get my mom to take it and she said sometimes i lie in bed wrong and i think i'm going to get up and i think oh no i've got to have that spirulina so i'm not going to get up but i didn't mind the taste at all but i think because it doesn't taste that good most people don't like spirulina yeah. but um do you what do you think about taking spirulina in the morning well well, this is the thing. I think, um, honestly, when spirulina first came out, and it wasn't as processed as what it is today. I know we keep on talking about being processed, but that's the truth of it. If we could have, because spirulina is seaweed. I mean, it's like it's like really taking um, Atlantic dulse and, and drying it out or seaweed strips. You know, yeah. the, the closer you are to the product being as real as possible, the more benefit it is. Yeah. So, you know, when it's made into powder forms, been through a process you know yeah. you want you want that wheat grass or that barley grass you want it grown sprouts somebody said sprouts yeah. yes blender sprouts have a high vibration a really high vibration so yeah. you want those sprouted um uh you know even the 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 beans and the 
the some of the you know the mung beans and things like that when you sprout them oh my gosh all of a sudden you you the vibration of that little you know seed and plant and everything is just so amazing absolutely so amazing so um so definitely um yeah gail said you don't even notice those things in a smoothie so so when you put spirulina in or coriander or parsley you don't notice it when you hide it with fruit and you yeah. put some fruit in there as well and yeah. then you, you know it's so good for you it is so good for you so just mix mix so it up to all the, the new people on here who haven't been with us before um yeah we, we should all be grazing we should be chewing the grass ourselves but we, we're not doing that so we're going to go to the next best thing which is having our alkajars in the morning which is uh, something that's alkaline your body you know cancer cannot grow in an alkaline body so we are so into alkaline in our bodies and we do have uh, celery, kale, avocado, and um, what have I forgotten? It's cucumber. Um, no, cucumber. And cucumber every morning. And I I'm, know I'm, I worked with a girl who had this huge stomach. And she started drinking uh, lemon, ginger, and celery, and cucumber in, in a smoothie. And I honestly could almost see her stomach going down. This big, fat stomach really went down with having that. So it really is good for you. I can tell everybody that's on. And, but to have it instead of coffee, coffee is so convenient. You go, it's like a social thing, almost like smoking now with coffee. But to, to actually make your, your smoothie ahead of time and make sure that you take it with you when you go somewhere. And if everybody else is having coffee, I just drink my smoothie and, and, and be done with it. And at the end of the day, as Eric Edmead said, you know, you, you don't want to upset somebody like I'm vegan. So when I go to somebody's house and they make, give me a big steak, I don't want to upset them by saying, no, I'm not going to eat it. But I, I'll upset myself much more if I do eat it. So at the end of the day, I say, thank you so much, but I'll just have the salad. You know, you, you can have the steak. And I, it's quite hard to do that. So I just want to say to people, if you want to trans transition to higher um foods you know that have got a high vibration just start with just adding some fruits and vegetables to your meal you know and then as you go you'll see, i mean here they do um, i had brussels sprouts the other night as my main course and we say you're having brussels sprouts as your main course but it was delicious it was done with maple syrup and orange peel and it was really a delicious mm -hmm. meal so yeah and there's and everybody who tasted said oh it actually does taste quite nice i would never have ordered it, but it does taste quite nice so i think we've got to start to transition slowly like anything else you can't just you know go curl turkey and go into it and mindful eating you've got to be conscious of what you how often you just pick up something and, and chew it i still do today you know you pick it up and oh yeah and i take one bite and say, oh my god what am i doing you know this this donut is sugar or something you know before you so i think mindful eating is is really really important and to, to, to think about your food and to plan your food for the week, I think is also the most important thing, you know, and when you're shopping to buy stuff that is really, really good is also important. What do you think, Terry? Yeah. So, so when you talk about that, um, that mindful eating, I was, I had a client the other day that ate a lot of rice and yeah. I said to this client, do you chew your rice grains? Like, yeah. are you, do you know, and they're going, uh, no, I'm just swallowing. I'm going, so you Exactly. So you're swallowing and now it's sitting as a big lump in the bottom of your gut. How is your body supposed to process that? Like mm. really, how's your body supposed to process? So when you think about your food, if you chew your food, if you spend a little bit more time and just chew your food a little bit better, I tell you now the digestive organs can work more efficiently. They really yeah. do more, work more efficiently. So we definitely want to be able to chew the food more and um, and be able to actually allow your body to process that so that um, so that your organs actually rest. You don't want those digestive organs working 24-7. You really, really don't. If your mm -hmm. digestive organs can rest whilst you're sleeping at night, you're going to do more healing. You're going to be able to activate more healing if the digestive organs are not working. So, um, so I did want to mention, if anybody has not tried to be vegan or vegetarian, I do have a 28-day, it's a deep cellular cleanse, and it is based on fruits and veggies, and my next group is starting this Monday, the 6th of May. So if anybody wants to try, and we just do it one week at a time as well, one week and then we do a check-in and a coaching call in one week and we do a check-in. But it's just to feel into how does my body feel with this living vibrational food in it versus yeah. how does my body feel with heavy foods? When I'm and eating dead cows and chickens, but you eat dead chickens, but I don't eat dead cows and chickens. <laughs> I do, I do. I, I, you know, I'm one of those South Africans that was brought up as a meat eater, and I can't get away from the dry horse and the bulltong, especially when I'm 
when, when, when you're here in New Zealand and all of a sudden you can get your hands on some, you know, something South yeah. African, you get all excited. You know? So, yeah. um, but I do definitely make sure that I have a lot of high frequency foods that are alive. You know, I, I have a lot of fruits and veggies, a lot of fruits and veggies. Um, and I think that is a huge difference. So, um, so yes. Yeah. So Carol I, says it's important to, for people to eat according to their blood group. Well, it depends what you eat according to your blood group. And um, so I don't know. Um, what do you think, Kerry? It, yes. So I, I truly feel that if there is inflammation in the body, so if we have symptoms that have shown up and there's inflammation, it's really good to check out the blood group diets to reduce the inflammation. So, so for instance, A blood groups, if there's inflammation in, the, in their body, they should only be eating fruits and veggies. If you a group a, a blood group A, you should not be eating meat if you're trying to reduce the inflammation in your body. Because A's for me were you, the original gatherers. O's were the original hunters. They were the ones that really, I think, went out and hunted. So I truly believe there were there were like different tribes, and um, and that was the different blood groups. But if you've got no inflammation in your body, then then that's okay. Then you don't have to eat as far as the blood groups go. I do just think that the blood groups help a little bit when you're trying to calm the body down so that you activate more healing. And um, and a way to do that really is um, really is to you know to make sure that you go back to the basics. You allow the digestive organs to rest as much as possible, and you activate more healing in the body. And you can do that through the blood group diet, or you can just do it through eating um, uh, fruits and veggies. Yeah. And talk to me about colonic irrigation now, where you actually they literally wash your stomach and your whole bowel out and clear all the rubbish out of it. Is what do you think about that? Some people are very pro and some people are very anti. I've had it once and it was a bit of an experience. And I have and I think I haven't been back because I haven't, you know, it's a schlep to get there and to go sit for an hour and the whole thing. So I haven't been back. What do you think about that? To me, yeah. to, to wash your insides out is, you know, I'm a fanatical showerer. So to me, it sounds good. But what do you what do you think about that? Yeah. So so I've also had it done because you know I've also got to try everything. So it's just like <laughs> once. I'll try anything once. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just try it. I'll try. Um, so but what I had what I have seen is that um first of all, we we've got to get rid of the toxins in our body. So, yeah. so if you have a problem with constipation, it's like you've got to change things up. And if it means that you've actually got to go and remove it, uh, you know, then, you know, go and do the colon cleans. But what I have seen is that people become very reliable on that. Mm. And then the movement of the intestine don't, doesn't work properly on its own because they're so reliant on, okay, once a month I'm having my flush. And mm. so I don't actually need, the body doesn't actually have to need as, as uh, work as much as what it should do. And the other thing is, when you're having a flush like that, you've got to make sure that it's not flushing out the good bacteria as well as the bad bacteria. Because mm. we've got to have that balance of the gut microbiome in our gut. And mm. often when we're doing a flush, we're flushing everything out, which mm. means you've got to build back the good stuff. And if you don't have a really good routine of building back the good stuff, you're going to have a colon that doesn't work efficiently after that. So mm -hmm. be very, very mindful, be really careful. And if you go and have it done, go to a real professional, somebody who knows, somebody who's, who's obviously done this, who's had lots of experience with it. But first thing is, Get rid of the shit. <laughs> Get rid of the toxins. Like you don't want that in your body. You actually don't want the toxins in your body. <laughs> well, uh, Ruth's saying, uh, I love the Kamara, Kira. I don't know what that is. Please give us a tip oh. on inflammation. So tell us about what, what is Kamara? I'm missing out. Kamara is like a, it's, it's a sweet potato, it's orange in color. <laughs> I promise you now, it goes with everything. It goes with every meal. It goes with every vegetable. It goes with every meal. It's just one of those such a versatile vegetable. Um, it's really, really, yeah, it, it's so tasty. It's really awesome. And um, and Ruth, a couple of weeks ago, um, we couldn't get it in our fruit and veggie shops. Like, and was like, I was a bit devastated. It's like, when is it coming back? But anyway, it was just a short, a short break and not being able to get it. And then we were back on track with it. But um, I'm 100%. I love the Kumara. It's so lovely. So lovely. And B, so are you talking about a B blood type, a, a tip on inflammation? So B blood types, um, the one thing is 
if you are B blood type, uh, don't eat the big heavy red meats either. B blood types, you know, their body is really much better on the gentle meats like lamb, the baby stuff, lamb and mutton, um, or the fruits and veggies, the fruits and veggies, you know, everybody can actually um, do really well with fruits and veggies in their system in order to calm the body down. Think about, think about when you eat a fruit, how quickly does a fruit on an empty stomach, you eat fruit on an empty stomach, how quickly does that fruit digest through your body? It actually goes through really, really quickly. And all of a sudden you go, oh, I feel hungry straight after or a little while afterwards like that didn't fool me. But that's what we want. We want the food to go quickly through the system so that we absorb the most amount of nutrients out of that food so that our body can have the energy. That's what we're looking for. So if one apple, apple is really good for liver detoxing, by the way. So you want an apple a day. So, um, so one apple, if you think about it, if you're not full, well, then do a fruit salad or do a smoothie. The smoothies have got a massive amount of nutrients going into your body. So you feel fuller for longer. So that's what we're looking for is to feel fuller for longer with lots of nutrients. And if you're getting the nutrients um, in, in the form of high vibration fruits and veggies, that's why I always put veggies into my smoothie as well. Because yeah. the, the vibration of veggies is so awesome and you don't you don't taste it so bad if you're actually adding it to, uh, you know, an apple or a banana, especially for children. Um, yeah. You know, for kids, I'm always, always putting in uh, fruit for children because they need it during their growing years. Fruit yeah. is amazing, amazing for, um, for hormone balance. Fruit is amazing for our metabolism to speed up that metabolism. Fruit is amazing for um, for our overall um, immune system. Um, so, you know, for me, it's like we should be eating lots of fruit and veggies. Yeah. We should. And also apple does help to preserve things. If I've got to make my smoothies ahead because I've been at school now from nine in the morning till six at night. So I took my smoothies with me. I had to make them ahead of time and I wanted to preserve them. I just put an apple in because the apple juice is a, a natural preservative. So it really keeps them fresher for longer. It makes a huge difference. Wow. It also makes awesome. it taste so much nicer as well. So, wow. yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you, Mandisa. Mandisa just put in there the, the B blood group, also yeah. um, pescatarian, so fish, white yeah. fish, absolutely, that works for B, B blood types as well. Yeah. <laughs> and now sure. she has lamb as well. So there you go. Yeah. My, my family love lamb. They'll have that in preference to everything. I'm the only one who doesn't eat it. So, yeah, and now let's just go into, and we obviously all doing this so we feel good. You've got to feel better. You've got to feel healthy. You've got to feel energetic. You know, your metabolism has to go. You have to, you don't want to be the one who's lagging. Oh, I don't feel like coming and that type of thing. And it all goes down to eating the right foods. But um, can you tell us more about, yes, we know we've got to eat fruits and vegetables. Yes, I am doing a cookbook, Guys and Dolls, and it will come out eventually. This one's been a bit longer than it should have been. Um but what are the other foods that we can eat? Like I, I'm a great, I eat a lot of lentils. I really do. Um, I eat a lot of beans. I think they've got a lot of vitamin B in them. What else should we eat? Well, uh, just to mention a little bit more of how vibrational foods that we can go to, believe it or not, honey. Honey is really, and you mentioned earlier maple syrup. Now that yes. is also, it's a natural source of a sweetener. So honey and maple syrup I would I would actually use in my baking. You know that yeah. for me, if you put if you put uh, if, if we're talking about now we want good vibrational baking stuff, um, yeah. the the flowers that we use is coconut flour or um, almond flowers. Um, yeah. I put dates and bananas and raisins and so those type of fruits things, and then your honeys, your maple syrups, you know things like that. So so yeah. definitely, um, you know. The, the we mentioned the salts and the peppers the spices the um the herbs mm -hmm. those things all add to making the food at, at a at a higher vibration as well but um but yes don't forget about how good honey is for you i often say this to people as we're going into the winter season um you know honey with lemon slice yeah. a lemon lemon is alkaline if you put lemon in water it alkalines your body so lemon does not make your body acidic. It actually is so good for us. It's really good for us. So use your slice of lemon. I had somebody come to me the other day and said, I can't drink water because I don't, it's got no taste. It's bland. So I said, right, have you put a slice of lemon in? Have you put a slice of cucumber? Put some mint leaves in, you know, put a slice of lemon, uh, orange. 
she put a slice of orange in. She says, I'm the biggest fan of, of water now. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it just add, it. yeah. It just adds something, a little slice of something to what you are already doing. And then, and then one thing that I do want to mention, this body cannot survive without breath. <laughs> so when we're breathing, we are increasing the vibration of the cells. That's exactly what we're doing. And it's really a good idea to play with different types of breathing for mm. different things that you're moving through. For instance, if you are stressed, if you are stressed, what you need to do is in order to calm the system because a calm body also heals faster. So we want to calm, we want to rest, we want to, to listen to our body. If you're tired, don't push yourself because that is also, it's like if you're tired, the body's saying, can I just rest now? Can I just rest? But we want energy bodies. So mm -hmm. energy bodies are able to actually um, have more adventure, do more things, be more, we want sustained energy. And what I find is people that have refined sugars or dead foods, they have the crashes in the afternoon. They have the crashes in the energy that they can't sustain the energy throughout the day. So um, so if you look at Margaret and ourselves, we get up early, we go, go, go. We're yeah. going into the okay. evening and it's our natural energy. It's our natural energy. We don't rely on the caffeine. We don't rely on the refined sure. sugars. We don't rely on any of that. We rely on the, vibra the vibration from the foods to give us energy in our bodies. That's what we're looking for. And so breath work is also really important. So if we are too stressed, a good thing to do is they talk about the four, seven, eight breath. So you breathe in for four, you hold for seven, and you breathe out for eight. If you do that a few times, immediately your body's actually calmer. It's yeah. calmer because it's actually quite hard to breathe in for four, hold the breath and breathe out for eight without calming the system down. So that for me is a beautiful way of just going, okay, I've got it. I've got it. There's also just different types of healing breath work that you can go through. But breathing properly, breathe in through the nose. The, the sinus uh, passages are here so that it actually conditions the oxygen to be absorbed into the bloodstream easier. We get 20% more oxygen into the bloodstream if you breathe through the nose. Mm -hmm. So you breathe through your nose, you hold your breath, and you breathe out through your mouth. If you breathe out through the mouth, you're breathing carbon dioxide out. So if you find that people have bad breath, that's their body saying they need to detox. Their mm -hmm. liver needs to actually work better and harder. And um, a bad breath often comes from a liver that's out of balance. So we need to make sure that we flush the carbon dioxide, the toxins out, but we need the good air and the good oxygen to come in through the nose and just calm the body. Just calm the body so that you can actually heal it at a better rate. So yeah, and with yeah. yoga, you doing that. Yoga does that. I see um, both Glenda and Carol say fresh ginger and warm water sips throughout the day. Great detox. So yeah, I, I love ginger. I actually put it into everything. Yeah, it's just amazing. I yeah. I do have a lot of garlic as well. I, I think people say they probably say, oh my gosh, you had garlic again. I do have a lot of garlic, a lot of ginger, and a lot of um. A lot of water and just that odd bit of salt as well, not not to overdo it. Um, I was just going to—I was actually going to say something completely different, but now I've been reading all the all the things and and just incredible here here how different it is. But yeah, you know, and I'll be cooking in Durban and at the East Coast House and Garden Show in July, and um, we got the Mrs. South Africa. I see we've got some Mrs. South Africans on here with us today, so we've got Mrs. South Africa on the Friday night, and then I fly down Saturday morning to cook on Saturday. And I really want to have some really nice stuff, and I'm so excited about that. Um, funny enough, I just got that sweet potato recipe, a sweet potato recipe, and they were orange sweet potatoes that they were cooking with. So I'm going to be doing that, and um, I'm going to try and make an, a cake without eggs and without a lot of sugar in it. We, we use apple sauce and banana to bind. And then we're going to be in the one pot, we're going to be cooking that stew with all the, the good veggies and all the lentils and the beans and everything in it as well. So that's going to be really, really good. So um, that, that will be us in July. But can you tell us um, now, just to the rest of us who want to just eat these high vibrational foods to keep our vibration up, we obviously know exercise is really, really good. That sure gets you going. The breathing we're going to do, we're going to eat well. What else should we do? 
Yeah. So let me just say something about exercise, by the way, because if if you can't exercise, if there is, um, you know, aches and pains in the joints or, or there is an excess of weight and you really can't exercise or you just don't, you're not one of those gym bunnies, you don't want to go to the gym, you know, the best, best thing you can do is the human bounce. And the human bounce is this. <laughs> that's what it is it's if you have one of those little rebounders even better that's absolutely amazing but if you just move your body up and down up and down and you can be on your feet whilst you do this it helps your circulation and your circulation is going to flush the toxins out and move the oxygen to the different parts of your body we mm. don't want to feel cold feet okay mm. so mm. if we are cold at any part cold hands cold feet we want to do the human bounce we want to do the human bounce. And they say you only have to do it for three minutes, three times a day. So right. if you finish this call, you get off this call and you just do the human bounce. Just actually bounce your body up and down. It's amazing. Amazing. There has been research done saying people that jump on the trampoline have managed to get rid of their cancer cells. So yeah. that's been, you know, research that has been done. You bounce the bad stuff out. You yeah. bounce the toxins out of your body. So, um, so if you can't exercise where you're actually sweating, then definitely just bouncing is going to be absolutely amazing. Yes, Happy bouncing, happy bouncing. <laughs> yeah, and then, at gym, you used to have those vibrating machines as well. You'd get on it, it would vibrate you. And those really work. They've, I think they've taken them out of a lot of gyms now, but I bought my own, which I've got in Joburg. And um, yeah, it's it's really super. Carol wants to attend the, the cooking. It's at the East Coast Radio House and Garden Show. Shane will send you the link to the East Coast Radio House and Garden Show where we're cooking. We'll be cooking every day. We're actually running the kitchen. But a lot of the stuff is not my kind of food because we are cooking meat and chicken and fish and that type of stuff. But my stuff will just be all veg vegetarian stuff, vegan actually, and with wild fit thrown in as well, just for good measure. So I have to send it to Kerry to make sure I've got my wild fit side of it right because I'm still practicing a bit on the wild fit side. But awesome. I would say that since I've been on wild fit, and those of you who haven't been on wild fit, just Google Eric Edmeads and wild fit. It's such a fantastic way of living and it's a, it's a way of life. Um. Oh, Sharda says she's cooking there too. Lovely. You're cooking lovely and lovely Indian cooking down there. It's going to be fantastic from Shah Spices. Oh, wonderful. That's amazing. And, you know, I brought my Shah Spices all the way to America. I thought I might be arrested because you're not allowed to bring anything in here, but I had to bring them with me. So, yeah, we got, we've got amazing things there. We'll be cooking up a storm. And I think it's, you know, to everybody who's out there, you don't feel like cooking, you don't want to. But at the end of the day, if it's what you eat yeah. is what you put into your body that's the fuel you're putting into your body you've got to put good fuel in we say when i bought my porsche it was a diesel porsche and they said if you put petrol in it'll never go again and it, and i was so nervous every time i was like where are you gonna put diesel in um because yeah it just, it just makes such a difference if you put the right stuff in it'll go and if you don't put the right stuff in you won't go anymore so mm -hmm. just be uh, nearly our time's nearly up kerry uh, just in closing from you about food vibrational food and vibrational energy what else? How can you close this off? So, so just one little thing as we're mentioning spices here, because I love spices, really good spices. Um, cayenne pepper is amazing for our blood. Amazing. Mm -hmm. It cleans our blood. So anytime you can just sprinkle a little bit of cayenne pepper. I know it's quite hot and spicy for me, um, but but it really is a good blood cleaner. So um, so cayenne pepper, ginger and garlic, red onion, and honey and lemon, you can't go wrong. You yeah. cannot go wrong. And it, that actually cleans the arteries. That is part of our artery cleanse recipe. And it actually cleans blocked arteries. So um, so that really helps. So food for me, food is medicine. That's exactly the way I, that's the way I teach. That's the way I um, you know, I really, really um live. I I, I walk, walk my talk. Food is honestly can be the medicine. And uh, there we go. Glenda, cinnamon for, for diabetes. You see in the spices and in the herbs, we've got the healing. We've got the healing. We definitely have. And if we fill our bodies just full of all the good, really nutritious food, um, you're going to be good. You're going to be good. It really, really is part of the healing. So um, I think be mindful about consciously making the right choices, the really yeah. the right choices for our living body. If we can have living food into this living body, the body is going to live longer. So living food into the living body, 
the body will live longer. Live um, longer and live healthier as well. Because you don't want to have a long, miserable life. You want to have a life, yeah. a really healthy life. So yeah, at next month is the 20th of May. We are talking about self-care and self-love. Now, this was a very difficult thing for me because I was always taught not to love myself. I was taught not to care for myself, to put everybody else first. And as women, we tend to do that. We put everybody before us. But you know what? You have to look after yourself at the end of the day. So it's so, so, so important. So join us on the 20th of May. It's also a Monday at same time, same place. And we'll be talking about self-care and self-love. How do you get to love yourself? How do you get to care for yourself? And um, I used to do, you know, we sell mirror fridges. And I used to make the staff walk up to the mirror fridge and say, I love you. And none of them could do it. They would shy away. They would hide their face. That was so terrible. They couldn't bring themselves to do it, which is such a simple thing. But, you know, you can't love anyone else if you don't love yourself. And you have people who have really bad relationships, one after the other after the other. And then we start saying to them, you've got to say, I love my, I love you to, to yourself. And when you do that, it's it's such a breakthrough. And it's really difficult. I found it difficult. It took me about three years to be able to do it. But Kerry's Keri, persistence, I managed. And it is life-changing. It's absolutely life-changing. And your know, shape says, I am enough. I've got that on my mirror. And um Thank you, Sibapi. We, we, we're so happy that you liked it. And it, it fits in with the Mrs. South Africa schedule because you've got to love yourself. And you know, people see, oh, my God, look at those girls. They, they're so full of themselves. And as Oprah said, I'm so full of myself. It's actually overflowing. I'm overflowing. It's, it's, I've got so much energy and so much. So there we go. Thank you so much for all of you who joined us. Thank you, Sharda, for joining us and for posting your recipe. And thank you, Kerry, for being here. And we look forward to seeing you next month. Um, with the self love and all the, the um, all the other things that we're going to be talking about there, so we always we start off with the subject and we go off in a hundred different directions. So thank you to everybody who joined us. Thank you to um, Kerry for putting her time and effort in. Thank you to Shane and Faye for being with us, and for Tatiana who are with us tonight from Hershey's. And yeah, we look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you, people. Lovely. Thanks everybody for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye.